In the year 1990, there was an anime feature as a collaborative release with three different entries on the bill. So-called entries being Pink Water Thieves Rain Thieves, Dragon Ball Z Movie 6 Tree of Might, and today's Akira Toriyama anime Kenosuke Sama. I've seen people say that this feels like illegitimate DLC content for Dragon Ball and no truer words have ever been spoken. The initial impression one will take to Kanosuke sama is how it fails to hide its Toriyama roots both in spirit and physically. In the anime's art style, we get a few familiar faces in here. I don't think I need to acknowledge them directly, just comment who they are when you see them. And down to the very aesthetic of the environment is a ode for you of the rural Dragon Ball settings we've seen in the past between the original Kid Goku series and Z. The main focus of the plot is the preschool kid here by the name of Kanosuke, who's invited on a date by Chi Chi, I mean Odin. The funny thing about Odin is that she shares an extremely similar personality to she that will not be named from Dragon Ball, and in a lot of ways more aligned with the older version due to her sassy and tempered nature. Kanosuke, on the other hand, to me, doesn't really feel all that much like Goku aside from him being a kid who's advanced for his age both physically and from a primal and instinctual standpoint. Psychologically, I find Kanosuke to be more in his own realm and have a more unique personality from what everyone would come into this expecting from a Toriyama work. Actually, he's pretty normal compared to Goku. Anyways, majority of the episode is Kanosuke collecting data from different people such as his mother and Ula, I mean, Shinobi Maru on what a date is. How it's supposed to go, cause he doesn't know. Shinobi Maru accompanies him on his so-called quest from his debut moment throughout the remainder of the anime. And the two of them represent the protagonist for the adventure. But yeah, Kanosuke is learning what to expect, how to make sure the girl doesn't think you're terrible, and all of these other things many young men don't learn or even care for until they get about a decade older than he currently is. No 18 plus stuff here, just common courtesy for courting. And yes, the entire thing is just him preparing for this date. And then things happen around that narrative as accessories to the story and overall experience or the small village world we're exploring. It's a pretty charming story despite how juvenile it may seem on the surface. It takes the whole naivety of the young theme and makes it funny, but still presents it all in a way where you actually try to take it seriously. Kanosuke is obviously mature and ahead for his age, and maybe all the kids who we don't meet in this story are, cause look at where Odin's state of mind is too, but yeah, Kanosuke is trusted to travel the streets solo and perform adult activities such as going out for a drink, non-alcoholic drink of course, and pay for it. He even stands up and fights against bullies holding his own. But that's pretty much all though. You know this is only 20 something minutes long. I deeply believe the story was supposed to take a backseat to the world created here. And I feel as though this represented another opportunity for Toriyama to show that there's more that he could do with his designs and world building than just the Dragon Ball oriented stuff. Beyond even what he did with Dr. Slump. Yeah, he did an excellent job here as this is a land I would love to visit if it were real. So if I was to choose, I'd say this flows more in spirit with original Dragon Ball not just for the youthness of the characters, but the world actually being more quieter and lighthearted in nature the way early Dragon Ball was. It also shares the same Dragon Ball trait of technically being set in modern times, though being somewhat time frozen into traditional Japanese eras. Kenosuke sama proves more of this as it's the samurai period they're clearly locked into. Now if you want to look at the Dragon Ball connection as this being something that takes place in the same universe or time frame as the series just in a different location of their world, that would still work too. It shares the same quality, well almost the same, just the least little slither less in animation and I think that contributes to the feel as well. When watching and reflecting, I tried to objectify this series away from Dragon Ball, but seeing as it doesn't offer much, I discovered it benefits more from just being blatantly compared to its big brother than me just trying to force dignify it into its own identity. But yeah, Toei did their thing with this, and I can't help but feel kinda cheated with how little we got to taste of this miniature franchise. I wish there was more, but either way it probably would've never happened cause it's based off a comic that was only a one shot. It was never meant to be anything major. Like the video, comment down below what y'all wanna see next. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Anime back when.